The most important news of all, of course, is that Bradley Cooper and Huma Abedin are dating. <laughs> Why do you at this? I, I don't know. It just all seems fraught somehow. And, <laughs> and I, I just I saw the Anthony Weiner documentary and mm. I, I just I'm just thinking, like, meet someone comfortable out of the public eye, maybe. I, I, I you know, I, I have it's not my business. So she can date whoever she wants. But I don't know. I just think that. Um, I think dating famous dudes is 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 just a recipe for disaster sometimes. But maybe the argument is that you can only date famous dudes because only they understand what it's like to be famous. I guess. Right? No one, no one else understands the constant scrutiny and the white hot media glare. Meryl Streep's been married to a sculptor for decades, you know. <laughs> Well, she is better than all of us in every way. I mean, come on. <laughs> True. And a winter set them up. Um, mm. I think it's it's a it's a trade up for them both in a lot of ways. Like clearly, who would you rather date, Bradley Cooper or Anthony Weiner, or be involved with? You know, well, there's these that. are the choices. Sure, yeah. There is that, mm. and also, um, he gets to date a grown up finally, somebody who is age appropriate, somebody who is very accomplished in her own oh, right. Oh, I haven't been paying attention. Is he? Uh, has he been? Is he? Is he hanging out at nurseries? What's going no, on? No, the famous photo of him like reading in the park with Suki Waterhouse, who's like half his age, and like she's like laying in his lap, and he's reading to her, and Irina Shake, who is a Victoria's Secret model, is the, the mother of his child. We also have a weird story that came out. Um, speaking of Where the Crawdads Sing, which we reviewed mm. earlier this week, um, yep. the author of Where the Crawdads Sing, oh, Delia yeah. Owens. So this is a story that's been out there for a while and has resurfaced because now the film version of her best-selling novel is out in theaters. Delia Owens and her ex-husband are wanted for questioning in a murder in Africa from the 90s. Yeah. The thing is that they owned a whole bunch of land in Africa and apparently they were very protective of it and would, you know, at least the ex and his son, their son would like brag about going after poachers. Mm. And so there was a, a body found dead and like there's video of her and the ex like at the body. And oh, man. So, yeah. It's a weird story. And given that, like, you know, what the book is about, Army Hammer apparently is selling timeshares in the Cayman Islands. Okay. Is he, though? Or I thought the thing <laughs> was that it was like they thought it was him and he had to put out a statement saying, no, I, I wasn't. Like, wh where are we now with this? So there was this jokey flyer, this rumor put out there that he was working as a concierge at a <laughs> resort in the Caymans because he had like jokingly put on the shirt uniform and like went and stood behind the desk. And he's, I guess, you know, his, he has lived there for a long time. His mm -hmm. ex and their children live there. His and money his, lives there. Right. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that they did when the COVID first hit, they mm -hmm. moved down there permanently and that's when everything fell apart. And so supposedly he is, even though he's a hammer, apparently he needs to actually make his own money. It's not yeah, like I, that he just gets an allowance or whatever. Like he has to actually have a job. And because all of these, you know, sexual assault and cannibalism rumors and mm -hmm. accusations came out, he has not been able to work. He's lost a whole bunch of big high profile roles, including the starring role in the offer, which then went yes. to Miles Teller. I can't even imagine army hammer in that role in retrospect, but mm -hmm. um, so I guess he has to actually work. And he's working selling timeshares in the Caymans. I, I, yeah, There's a whole variety know. story on it. The, so much of this does not pass the sniff test. I, I think that if if the condition for his, you know, uh, uh, trust fund or whatever that he has to be holding mm -hmm. a job, like I'm sure he could find something that's just off the books and invisible somewhere. And he's not going to be out shilling. I, who knows? Stranger things have happened, but I just, when it comes to rich people, I don't believe they ever actually lift a finger. We will follow this story because I want As to know the truth. I want to know the truth about this. Do you see this whole thing with Joe Dante going off on baby Yoda? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, he, look, he did, he did, they did win a lawsuit against Furbies back in the day. I seem to recall when, when they changed Furbies to look more like Gizmo and, and like, I think they got sued over it, but 
But Baby Yoda does not look like Gizmo. Baby Yoda looks like a baby version of Yoda, hence the name. And Yoda came before yeah. Gremlins came out. Yeah, yeah. I, I you know, <laughs> look, it's, it's one thing for him to be like, yeah, they stole my idea. But like, do we honestly think that Amblin is going to sue like Disney or George Lucas over this? No, of course no, not. They're all old <laughs> friends. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I don't know whether he was just shit stirring. I enjoy Joe Dante. He's great. He's uh, <laughs> a, a, a master American filmmaker. I think he was shit stirring. I like how the headlines are like Gremlins director goes off. I'm like, <laughs> he has a name. He's Joe Dante. <laughs> Marcel the Shell with Shoes On is out yes. today <clears throat> in theaters nationwide. I <clears throat> absolutely loved it. You are not quite so enthusiastic, but I, you I, I liked it. it. I liked it quite a bit. I'm, I'm, I was less enthusiastic than you. It doesn't mean I'm not enthusiastic. It's really good. And now it's playing nationwide. So uh, go find it near you. But the director, Dean Fleischer Camp, it was just announced, is going to direct a live action version of Lilo and Stitch. Yet another animated Disney movie that they are turning into a live action version. <sighs> How is is Stitch like going to be stop motion animation? Is it like the Marcel voice coming out of Stitch? I'm confused. Well, uh, you know, let's never forget that, you know, the live action Lion King was all mocap so. CG. So, um, yeah, I'm sure Stitch will probably be CG. It'd be cool if you were mocap. Maybe that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. um, I, look, uh, as as much as I'm thrilled when, when you know, my, my acquaintance Dean DeBlois gets checks, uh, I don't know that we need another live action adaptation of a classic Disney animated film. Um, do you see the sad Constance Wu story? Yes, I'm glad she's feeling better now. Yeah, so Constance Wu, when she was at the height of her popularity and fame between Fresh Off the Boat and Crazy Rich Asians, she tweeted like angrily mm -hmm. upon the knowledge that Fresh Off the Boat was going to get renewed. Right. And it came off as really entitled and negative and just tone deaf and you know it it diminishes the work of everybody involved in that series but she was looking at through the the prism of i've got stuff on the horizon that i want to do that's very important to me that i now cannot do and right. the backlash was so severe that she now says that she attempted suicide and yeah. is now back on social media after three years she has written a book she wrote um, very candidly about her suicide attempt and how devastating it was. And also in the larger picture of um, the reluctance among many Asian Americans to speak about mental health and to speak about any mm. kind of weakness like that or any kind of need for help. Mm. So. Yeah, I mean, I think it, 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 as it, yes, it's fun to drag celebrities on Twitter, but like they are human beings, they are probably going to read it. And so like, you know, maybe don't be shitty. We have some trailers to tell you about. Uh, if you loved Orphan, there's more Orphan coming. Really? Yes. You, do you, again, do you not read the notes I send you? I, I sent I, you I, an email. I <laughs> scanned them, but I don't always, uh, that one, I did miss that one. So Orphan I, first kill. Isabel Furman is back ooh. in Orphan first kill. <laughs> Our goal here is helping Esther acclimate back into life within the family unit. Sorry. All right. Didn't she kill people in the first orphan? She's going to kill more, apparently. Oh, Isabel right. Furman is just an intense young actress. And if and you haven't seen The Novice yet, see The Novice. She's so great in The Novice. And there's also a trailer for this movie called She Said, which is based on the true story of the New York Times reporters who broke the Harvey Weinstein news uh, about okay. all, all the Me Too with Harvey Weinstein. Um, it is starring Carrie Mulligan and Zoe Kazan. And it looks kind of clunky. I got to say, at least the lines that they picked out of the trailer, it mm -hmm. looks like they're absolutely spelling everything out in the most blunt and obvious ways imaginable. Well, trailers will do that sometimes. Mm -hmm. We talked about Stranger Things. We've wrapped up all of Stranger Things coverage on our Patreon. Mm -hmm. But now Noah Schnapp, who plays Will Byers, is explicitly spelling out what I think we could pretty much figure out, which is that Will is indeed gay and is in love with Mike. Okay. Well, I, you know, I, I think that was this. Usually I complain when they bring this up afterwards. I'm like, why isn't in the text? It's in the text. 
Yeah, I think between him getting all choked up in the backseat of the car and then that really mm-hmm. nice moment that Will has with Jonathan when they're loading up the freezer full yes. of salt yes. water for 11, like it's, I think it's pretty clear. Yeah, that they, they're not saying <laughs> it, but they're saying it. So yes. Yeah. And then Miss Marvel, which we're going to wrap up this week on our Patreon, the finale, the, the season finale, it looks like, mm. not series finale. Miss Marvel is the highest rated Marvel property TV show or film on the Rotten Tomatoes tomato meter. It's at 98%. Awesome. Great. Yes. Uh, it is one of the best things they've put out. Oh, I got no beef with that. Yeah. I mean, higher than Endgame, higher than Infinity War, higher than WandaVision, you know, the first Guardians of the Galaxy, like stuff that everybody really, really loves. Um, Miss Marvel is more popular, at least among critics. Yeah. any of those things so come find us at our patreon and uh, we will we will talk about that a couple quick little business items here apparently i pronounced ray seahorn wrong last week it is not ria oh you're right it is you're it right. is ray and i apologize yeah. one of our viewers pointed that out thank you also we're going to be gone for a couple of weeks we have lots of goodies in store for you that we have planned including a new segment that i'm really really excited about so uh stick around for that but i'm going on vacation yeah, if you haven't clicked the bell on our YouTube, uh, you know, find out when things are going to drop, you know, this is a good time to do it. But yes, we'll have, we'll, we'll be here with something uh, all the Tuesdays and Fridays while Christy's off having fun. 